Welcome back. This is part two of throwing a ball where we're going to try to actually solve a, a problem and see how far a ball will travel when you throw it. So here is the problem. It is uh, Ramin throws a ball. It leaves his hand at 10 meters per second. The angle at which it leaves his hand relative to the ground is 35 degrees. And the question is, how far will the ball travel uh, in the x direction, of course? So it, his hand, we'll say, is one and a half meters above the ground. So our situation looks something like this. Uh, this here, where it says one and a half meters, that's when the ball actually leaves his hand, because he's, you know, he has legs and stands up. Uh, the ball takes off, it, it follows its little course, and eventually hits the ground over here. And that's what we're going to try and find out. So we'll, we'll have to use the little equations that we learned about last time in part one and in the SVT diagrams. And we'll <clears throat> just try to slowly piece it together so that we don't go too fast and so that we can just make sure that we understand what's going on. It's usually difficult the first time you try and solve a problem when there's a lot of variables and a lot of things to keep track of. So we'll just, we'll just take it slowly. All right. We learned about the equation over here. We, we had this part that, that is from the last lecture, but we have to make a slight modification. And that is because we're taking it from uh, where the ball is starting. It has kind of an initial position and that will affect how far the ball travels. If he somehow threw it from, from the ground so that this part here was zero, we would just have a, a simple curve there and it would be a little bit easier. But this doesn't make it any more difficult. It, we just have to remember to keep track of it. All right, let's take a look here. We said that it formed a 35 degree angle relative to the ground. So we draw that in. And do get used to solving the problems by drawing a little diagram. It doesn't have to be to scale. You just need to be able to put your thoughts down on paper so that you have something to connect the formulas to so that you know what you're doing. Uh, <clears throat> let's try this now. We need to put up what we know. That's also very, very important. Don't try to start solving a problem until you write down everything that you know. All right. So we have uh, a velocity. And we know that when it leaves his hand, that's what it, what it is. We know that it's 35 degrees. Uh, we also know that we're going to let the y equals 0 point be here and that we'll modify the equation by adding the one and a half. And we did that on the page before. So this is just the bookkeeping. That, that's why it says y equals zero there, because that is the, the, the place where eventually we're going to end up at a y equals zero. And if he hadn't been, if his hand wasn't one and a half meters up, it, it would have started at zero. But we, we just have to keep track of it. So go ahead and, and write it down. Now, let's continue. We have the formula up here. And remember how I said that you'll, you'll need to know the initial conditions. And when you have them, you'll, you'll just replace them. And we know that y will equal 0 when the ball hits the ground. We know that the initial angle was 35 degrees. And then we don't care what happens. The ball is going to just do what it does. We just need to know the initial conditions so we can make our uh, calculations. And then it will follow the uh, the function there. What we don't know is how long it takes. And if we don't know how long it takes, we're not going to be able to get how far it goes. So we set up our equation. And let me just take the next step here. You see how I turn T blue there? <clears throat> well, I do that so that you'll easily be able to latch on to what kind of equation this really is. These are the kind of things we did in math C and even math B to a lesser degree. 
we, we wouldn't have the, the trigonometry part there in math B, but we've done the same class of equation. So what I've done is I've, I've simplified it and then I rearranged it. Okay, this part here, the sine of 35, it just comes out as a number, you multiply it by 10. And then this, you just simplify. And then I've rearranged it. See, this is the t-squared part. I went ahead and put the t-squared part here after we simplified. And then I put this, this one came from the 10 sine 35. Now t is still there. That's that t. And then the 1.5 just stayed where it was. And this 0 is still that 0. Okay, if, if that was too fast, just back it up, watch it again. But do you see now what kind of equation that is? It's a second degree equation. And sure, the numbers are a bit messy, but the principle of solving those is very, very simple. You can use the PQ formula. You can use the universal one with the ABC. You can use, uh, at this point, you could even use a program. So let's, let's go ahead and do that. Um, you can solve it how, however you like, uh, but when you do solve it, you're going to get two answers. One of them we can actually use, <laughs> and that's a good thing. This one, it would be a rather amusing thing to have the ball hit the ground before it left your hand, and that's what the negative time would mean. I'd, I'd enjoy seeing that, but unfortunately, it's not part of this problem. We just don't have any use for it. So we will only use the T1. So let me, let me clean that up there. Uh, we don't need external stuff there. I have a small screen. Okay, here is the time we're going to use. Now, now that we know how much time it takes before it hits the ground, okay, we'll be able to use our other equations to find out where it hits the ground in the exposition. Okay, when you look in the book or in the uh, formula book, remember that we, we talked about this and that this was the position. But in order to have the position, we needed to know how much time it took. We still need this. This is still the initial velocity that it leaves his hand with. And this will get us, uh, with the angle, the x position for every second that goes. So let's just plop that in. It's now going to be very, very easy. You see how we still need to use these brown numbers and they come up here. So I turned them brown so you could see what I'm doing. And now let's plop them in because the initial velocity was still 10 meters per second. The angle was still 35. And now we know t, the 1.38 seconds there. So then just go ahead and multiply it all out and clean it up. And you see that the distance, once it leaves his hand, is going to be about, about 11 meters. We only had two significant figures, so we could say in a final answer, we could say x equals 11 meters. But I still wanted to show you the, the little decimals that would come. So if you're doing this on the calculator, you won't be confused. Well, why did he just say 11? So uh, later we'll be a little more strict with the significant figures. But, but right now we can just uh, let it slide a little bit. Okay, so to repeat, we needed to write down everything that we knew. That's really, really important. We needed to use the y uh, function here in order to find the time that it took before the ball hit the ground. Once we knew the time, we could plug it into the x position equation and find out just how far it went. They're all very similar to this. Sometimes you'll have slightly different variables and you might want to find out, well, okay, instead let's find out how high up it goes. That's a problem for another day. So, okay, hope that helps. I'll see you next time.